Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for May 2017. The latest set of housing market indices showed a cooling in the rate of capital gain during April, with CoreLogic's combined capitals index slowing from growth of around 1.2% per month over the first quarter to just 0.1% over the month of April. While the result demonstrates a stark slowdown in the pace of capital gains, we need to remember this is just one month of data. So it will be important to monitor the data flows to see if this recent softening develops into a sustained trend of cooling housing market conditions. If the coming months show a similar soft to negative result, it's likely to be a firm indication that the housing market is moving through the peak of what's been a very strong and sustained growth cycle. The soft April reading was mostly due to a slowdown in the performance of the hottest markets. Sydney dwelling values were flat in April and Melbourne returned a gain of 0.5%. Both cities showed a remarkably flatter performance than what we've seen over recent months. Most of the remaining capital cities have shown similar trends to what's been evident over recent months. Perth and Darwin are continuing to see values trend lower, while growth conditions remain positive but relatively sedate in Adelaide and Brisbane. The Canberra housing market recorded a negative result for dwelling values in April, but the broader trend is likely to remain positive. Hobart's housing market has gathered some pace in 2017, with dwelling values rising by 6.6% over the first four months of the year. While the softer headline results hint at a slowdown in the hottest housing markets, other indicators are also suggesting April was a slower month for the housing market. National transaction volumes fell in April, however this can be at least partially attributed to seasonal factors like Easter, the school holidays and the Anzac Day long weekend. Transactions were also lower than the same time a year ago across most regions. Another factor that can help to explain why transaction numbers have slowed down relates to mortgage activity. CoreLogic valuation platforms recorded the lowest number of events per working day since July last year. Considering CoreLogic platforms account for more than 95% of banking sector valuation instructions, the activity that flows across them provides virtually a real-time indicator about mortgage demand. The slowdown in mortgage-related activity could also be partly seasonal, which is why we look at an activity-based measure on the number of working days each month. But there's also the fact that mortgage rates have been rising since August last year. With household debt levels at record highs, it makes sense that households will be more sensitive to the cost of debt. For investors, this sensitivity is compounded by the fact that rental yields are at record lows in Sydney and in Melbourne, and have trended lower across the other capital cities. Investor mortgage rates are now 25 basis points higher on variable loans and 30 basis points higher on fixed rate loans. Higher mortgage rates coupled with rental yields around record lows and strict servicing criteria from lenders is a recipe to slow down investment demand. A slowdown in investment activity will inherently impact those markets where investors are more active than others. Specifically, these measures are likely to dampen demand in Sydney where the latest data shows investors comprise 57% of new mortgage demand across New South Wales, and Melbourne, where investors comprise 46% of new mortgage demand across the state of Victoria. Add to this the latest round of APRA regulations, which will make it harder to secure an interest-only loan and probably place further upwards pressure on mortgage rates, and it's looking more likely that the housing market will be slowing further over the coming months. On the housing affordability front, CoreLogic's latest indicators show housing affordability based on a dwelling price to income ratio has never been this tough. Using December data, the national measure shows the median dwelling price is 7.2 times higher than the median annual gross household income, ranging from a ratio of 8.4 times in Sydney to 4.5 times in Darwin. The next few months will make for interesting analysis. If you're interested in tracking the housing market's performance in more detail, check out our wide range of research products and tools at www.corelogic.com.au.